Sisters and brothers, we begin our prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Uh, well, good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to Lent. Uh, we are celebrating the first Sunday of Lent this morning, and it feels like it. I don't know what Lenten weather is supposed to feel like, Brother Swift, but it kind of feels like it. Cold, cold windy, and rainy. <laughs> Uh, time to step back from the joy and enter into the passion and sorrow a bit of, of, um, of uh, our lives, those ways that we have maybe not walked on the path with Christ as we should. Well, Lent is a time to turn our hearts and our minds and our souls back to God, trusting that He is with us, that He forgives us, and that He, that he loves us. So as we begin this liturgy, we call to mind our sins, but even more, Remember God's love, mercy, and grace. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, This is a sign that I am giving for all ages to come, of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings so that the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. Your ways, O oh Lord, our love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Remember, 
that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of all. In your kindness, remember me. Because of your goodness, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. And he teaches the humble his way. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it he also went to preach to the spirits in prison, who had once been disobedient, while God patiently waited in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few persons eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now, it is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone to heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. It's a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. All right, first of all, brothers and sisters, before I get any angry texts, I forgot to announce the petitions, uh, the intentions of today's Mass at the beginning, so let me just do that right now. We're offering this Mass this morning on this first Sunday of Lent for in loving memory of Federico Ayuso, in loving memory of Ignacia Lily Garcia, in loving memory of Ivan Gabriel Mautus, in loving memory of Bob Ross, in loving memory of Carmela uh, Carmela Willoughby, in loving memory of Zola Knowles Gunn, and thanksgiving for graces uh, for Georgia Wagner. Well, this past Wednesday, we began Lent, Ash Wednesday, and even though it was an unusual beginning to Lent, uh, a lot of people still got their ashes. I think we gave out 300 little plastic containers of ashes at St. Martin's, and really from even the night before, the day before, till probably 10 o'clock at night, people were sending me WhatsApp, Father, I didn't get my ashes. How do I get my ashes? Um, Ashes are a big deal. I remember when I lived in New York City. That's a city that, ah, there are not a lot of religious people there. There's some religious people there. <laughs> but you'd walk around on Ash Wednesday, and even on the subway train or the sidewalks, you'd see people with ashes on their forehead. 
uh, everybody loves to get their ashes. I don't know why. It's the one day of the year that everybody gets to church. Someone said to me, one Jesuit said, well, it's because you're giving away free stuff, Father. Everybody coffee. Um, you get your um, palms and your ashes. Those are the two days that everybody comes. But really, I mean, you, it's just burned ashes. You could go out into your neighbor's yard and steal some, and they probably wouldn't even care. We got a lot of palms around here. <laughs> just make a little fire and burn them. Uh, it's, it's not a super free gift. Uh, it's just a little, little free gift. It's not like we're giving away fried jacks and pizza at church. Uh, what is it about those ashes that makes us all come? There's nothing magical about them. They're blessed, but there's nothing magical about them whatsoever. Uh, they're not like the Eucharist, you know, where we're actually receiving the Lord. They're just ashes that have been blessed. They're a sign, they're a symbol. A symbol of what? I think they're a symbol of the fact that we are all in this together as sinners. Every one of us has made a mistake or two in life. Pope Francis famously, and Ian reminded me of this yesterday, um, Pope Francis, the first, when he was first elected Pope, he gave a famous interview to all the Jesuit magazines in the world. And the interviewer said, who is Jorge Bergoglio? Who, that's Pope Francis' name before he became Pope. Who is Jorge Bergoglio? Who is Pope Francis? And Francis responded, Jorge Bergoglio is a sinner. A sinner loved by God. That's what he said. That was his first answer. I am a sinner. Uh, as St. Paul says, we're all sinners, or St. John, rather, first letter of John. We're all sinners, and whoever says he's not a sinner is a liar. It's the one thing that we all have in common. I remember my little niece one time. She was probably about five years old at the time, Clara, and she came home from school, and she said, my teacher is upset uh, because we're having a problem in class, and that problem is me. <laughs> <laughs> Then she said, my teacher is upset because nobody is doing their work. And that's me. <laughs> we are all sinners. I don't care whether you're Pope Francis or Brother Swift or Father Brian or a five-year-old niece Clara. It's one thing that we humans all have in common. Whoever says they're not a sin is a liar. And Pope Francis says beautifully, he continues beautifully, that Lent is the time to acknowledge that, to not be afraid of that reality. There is solidarity in the fact that we know we're all like that. We all have those bad hair days and those moments when we really fall, sometimes big and sometimes small. And Francis says that we're all like little babies, like toddlers, that we're toddling along and we fall. Again and again we fall. And each and every time we fall, our loving Father, our loving God, our loving parent is there to pick us up. And that's what Lynn is really all about. It's about allowing God to pick us up again and again in a way that's a little bit more intentional than we do the rest of the year. Pope Francis says, God has a project of love for each of us. A project of love for each of us. That's a beautiful way of putting it, I think. God wants each of us to be whole, to be filled with life, to be filled with love, to be filled with joy. He wants us to be our best selves. And sometimes our sinfulness and the sinfulness of others can make that project not happen. So Lent is a time for God to pick us up and to put us back on that path into that project of love once again. It's a time to look at our sins. It's a time to look at how things have gone wrong in our lives. A time to have a hard look at relationships. Husbands to wives, parents to children, brothers to sisters, bosses to employees, PUP to UDP, those who are rich to those who are poor, those who are educated to those who have no education. It's a time to examine all those relationships in our lives and see where things have maybe gotten a little bit off kilter and where we need to be picked up by God and put on that path again.
Now, you know, there are three traditional practices that go back even to the Old Testament um, that we do in these periods of Lent, that we do in these periods when we're trying to set things right. And those three uh, areas are fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. Fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. It's too early. My brain was not clicking. <laughs> Fasting. Uh, I, I, I was speaking to one of our parishioners yesterday, Miss Judy Perez, and she said, she said, Father, we grew up poor. There were nine of us in the family, and my mom had to feed all of us, and we had rice and beans every day of the year except for one. On Christmas Day, we got a little chicken neck, <laughs> and that was like gold. <laughs> I remember my dad saying something similar. He grew up in Michigan, and they never had fruit. They never had uh, oranges, except on Christmas, a big train would come up to Michigan and deliver oranges. So that was the one day a year they got it, and that was it. These days, we can have chicken any day we want, practically. We can have oranges every day of the week. Well, in Belize, they've always had oranges every day of the week. But uh, she said, Christmas Day, we got just a little chicken neck, and... A pack cake. It was the one day of the year they got a little slice divided between <laughs> a bunch of kids and relatives. Uh, and she said it was like heaven because they didn't have that any other, other day. Well, Lid, when we talk about fasting, I, I think it's a time to think about uh, how giving up certain things that we maybe take for granted can bring us closer to God. It's a time to let go of some of the things that we're always depending on and liking and let God come in a little bit more, have a chance to depend on him a little bit more. Um, chicken is a gift. Pack cake is a gift. Oranges is a gift. But how often do we think about that? No, we just go through the motions and eat it like it's nothing. No, it's a great gift, those things are. And so when we give them up, we have a chance to, to remember that fact and to maybe go a little bit hungry as we remember that. Now, I have to say, too, this year, we have a number of parishioners who are fasting involuntarily, who have no choice in the matter. Um, got a text from a, a woman just the other day, one of our parishioners. Father, I, uh, Father Jay, I feel very helpless, hopeless right now. There, there's not much... Um, to, to see a way forward. And she hasn't had a job since last summer. Uh, I went over to the house. There was practically no food in the house. Uh, their water had been cut off. And, you know, honest to goodness, I think someone like that, uh, who is not fasting because they want to, but because they have to, is probably the person closest to God right now. Our parishioners who are in that space are probably the closest to God of any of us because they know what it's like to have to trust and depend on God day to day, hour to hour. Uh, they can't just pull out their wallet and get whatever they need. They have to depend on God and God coming through those of us who do have things in order to make it. So fasting is giving up things uh, that we depend on in love so that God can come into that space a little bit more and so that we can learn to depend on him a little bit more. And it doesn't have to be food that we necessarily fast from. One of our sixth form students said last week that she's fasting from plastics. She's not going to use any plastic bags or any plastic uh, bottles or any plastic uh, straws, nothing plastic. She said, the earth needs to heal and I got to help it heal too. So she's giving away some convenience in her life for the good of everyone opening a space to let God's love come in even more. Uh, Pope Francis has, and maybe Ian will put it on the screen for us here, Pope Francis has a great thing. I've been seeing this meme float around on Facebook a little bit. Ways to fast, not just food. Pope Francis says, we can fast from hurting words and say kind words. We can fast from sadness and be filled with gratitude. We can fast from anger and be filled with patience. Fast from pessimism and be filled with hope. Fast from worries and trust in God. Fast from complaints and contemplate simplicity. Fast from pressures and be prayerful. Fast from bitterness and fill our hearts with joy. Fast from selfishness and be compassionate toward others. Fast from grudges and be reconciled. Fast from words and be silent so that you can listen. Fasting opens space in our hearts for the love of God and the love of others. And secondly, almsgiving. Uh, 
another classic way of helping God to pick us up and put us on that path during Lent. Um, Fasting can't just be about ourselves. Um, This season of Lent can't just be about ourselves. Oh, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z because I'm tough, and God is going to love me more if I do these things. No way. God loves you (laughs) whether you fast uh, from everything or fast from nothing. His love is there, uh, and it's always there. Um, But when we do these things, uh, we get a chance uh, to spread God's love and to fill our heart a little bit more. Uh, so, for example, uh, almsgiving. We have a parishioner in our parish who <laughs> doesn't have much. I remember I picked him up one time, uh, and, and his son was really sick. His son has since passed away, and we went over to his, his house, and they didn't have much there. So I took him to the store, to the 88th store over on the boulevard, and got him a few things that he needed for himself and his son. And then we got into the car and started to drive away, and as we were... Uh, about to drive away, there was a woman sitting on the sidewalk who was begging. She had a little, uh, like a basket, a little bag, and she was begging for money. And this man, who had nothing, got out of the car and gave her a shilling or two, put it in her bag. I had helped him, and he helped her. Um, Even if it's something really simple, almsgiving can make a big difference. Uh, You eat fried chicken two mornings a week and you decide you're gonna give that up for Lent. So you say, what, I don't know, $15, maybe $100 over the course of Lent, money that you don't necessarily have to keep for yourself. Maybe you can pass it on to someone in our parish or community who needs it even more. Almsgiving, a way of giving up the things, the gifts and the possessions that we have to help others. And then finally, prayer. Perhaps most important of all, It's good to get up in the morning and pray a rosary or to pray in Our Father, a Hail Mary, a Glory Be, whatever you do. But this Lent, I want to encourage us to go even deeper in prayer. I don't want us just muttering off words. I want us speaking to God as a friend, friend to friend. God, this relationship in my life is messed up right now. I've been avoiding it, and I need some help and healing there. God, this situation in my life is really stressing me out. This pandemic, whatever, I'm hurting from it, and I need you to help me heal. Or God, I can't seem to get out of this pattern of sin in my life, this thing that I keep doing over and over again, and I really need some extra help there. Um, or, or, or God, I'm grateful, you know. Thank you for these gifts that you put in my life. Uh, to, to say to God what's really on our hearts uh, and not be afraid to do that. Real talk real prayer this Lent, making time to not just to talk but also to listen, to find a little moment in our day when we get up in the morning or before we go to bed at night to find some silence and try and listen to the voice of God, the friend, the parent who loves us very much, speaking to us words of love and healing. All right, let's all have a good Lent with a little bit of fasting, prayer, almsgiving. Uh, we have a mass this past week with our sixth form and high school students, SJC, and they put together a little video just saying a few things that they were going to be giving up. And I thought it was a great video, and I wanted to share it with all of you because uh, they had some good ideas that I hadn't thought of about how to make this Lent special and intentional. Um, so we'll close with that. Ian, roll the tape. Hi, my name is Krista Luna, and this year I realized I've become maybe a little attached to my phone and this sometimes leads me to get distracted and it pulls me away from my schoolwork. So this year for Lynn, I decided that I'm going to be giving up my phone on Fridays. Not only will this be able to give me a bit more free time, but it will also allow me to focus on things that are more important. As Christians, we observe 40 days of Lent. During these 40 days, we try to focus more on God by engaging in prayer, fasting, and giving. For this year, I have decided to give up my video games, which I enjoy very much. Hello, my name is Marika Tlid, and two things that I will be giving up for Lynn are watching Netflix and eating wings. What I've been deciding to giving up for Lynn is buying lunch. I would like to do home-cooked meals for Lynn. Also, another thing that I will be giving up for Lynn is using plastics, like plastic straws, plastic cups, plastic 
bottles, I would like to just stop my usage of plastics. Hello everyone, my name is Giselle Hill. Some things that I will be giving up this Lenten season is feeling bad for a situation that is out of my control and also um, junk food. My name is Anthony Abunera. I'm a fourth form science student and I'm going to give up procrastination for them. A few ideas from our students here at SJC. I'm not going to give up Netflix or chicken wings or procrastination. Maybe plastic though. Sisters and brothers, let us stand as one people of faith and profess our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, sisters and brothers, we take a moment to pause in our liturgy to lift up our prayers, our needs, our intentions for our world, for our church, for our community, for our families, for ourselves. That these 40 days of Lent may be a desert experience for each of us to rediscover the ways of God. Let us pray to the Lord. That all who serve the church as pastors, ministers, and teachers may effectively proclaim the reign of God. Let us pray to the Lord. That those who govern nations and human destinies may be committed to the justice and mercy of God, working unceasingly for the alleviation of hunger and misery in our world. Let us pray to the Lord. That in making moral and ethical choices, we may not bow before money, power, and prestige, but place our hope in the saving word of God. Let us pray to the Lord. That our compassionate Father in heaven will watch over those who have been displaced from their homes by disasters, persecution, or financial hardship. Let us pray to the Lord. That those who have died and those who will return to God during this Lenten season may experience the eternal life of the victorious Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. That God will hear the prayers we now offer in the silence of our heart. Let us pray to the Lord. And Almighty God, we lift up all these prayers to you, trusting that you give us what we need when we need it, as we make these prayers in the name of Jesus, our brother and savior. And we ask our good mother Mary to join her prayers with ours as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
And sisters and brothers, let us pray together that these our offerings will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and faithful God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining 40 days from earthly food, Jesus consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to us to be reconciled, O God, so that converted to you at last, we might love one another through your Son, for whom, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that evening, he, he took the chalice of blessing into his hands. Confessing your mercy, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have given to us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly ask you to accept us also, together with your Son, in this, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all peoples. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Lawrence, our Bishop, with all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her faithful husband, with your blessed apostles, and with all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Sisters and brothers, as one family of God, one body of Christ, we pray the prayer that reminds us that we're all in this together, that as we make this Lipton journey, uh, we don't do it alone. We do it with the support and the prayers of one another. And so we pray. <laughs> us, dear Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that with the help of your mercy we might be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For thine is the We ask God for the gift of peace. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you said your apostles, peace. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, Lord, look on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And we share with each other a virtual sign of Christ's peace. Peace, 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 church. Jesus, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we, called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ keep us safe to life eternal.
Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. With when your wounds hide me. Permit me not to be separated from thee. From the wicked foe, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to thee, that with thy saints I might praise thee forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured. Through Christ our Lord, amen. All right, church, just a couple quick announcements. Um, uh, we've got a number of things going on in Lent right now, and you can check Facebook and, and WhatsApp because I'm going to send these out later today. I won't forget. I keep meaning to. Um, first of all, every uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Facebook, members of the Jesuit community here um, are going to be doing uh, reflection videos. The ones that we were doing last summer, they're back for Lent. Uh, every Monday and Wednesday and Friday we'll have a new reflec reflection video. Uh, so you'll hear from a number of Jesuits throughout the country on the readings of the day. Um, secondly, uh, Daily Mass has resumed uh, 6.30 in the morning, Monday through Friday. Mondays are usually communion, communion service and Tuesdays through Fridays are Daily Mass. So uh, we, we've been having a pretty good crowd. Friday we had about Hmm, 50, uh, so very big crowd. Uh, if you want to come uh, to, 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 to gather in a real church and receive the real, real presence, um, feel free to come to Daily Mass some morning. Um, our parish Linton retreat um, is, is starting up. The info session was last Thursday. I don't think it's too late to sign up for that if you still haven't, so uh, send us a message on Facebook or call the parish office uh, or, or WhatsApp if you want to get in on that. That meets Thursday nights at 6 p.m. with some faith sharing and a little reflection. And then finally, uh, we'll be having a penance service, um, a chance for real confession uh, for the first time in quite a while this upcoming Saturday. Uh, we're going to do it in Swift Hall. Um, Swift has grac graciously agree agreed to allow us to use his, to use his space <laughs> um, so that we can have proper social distancing. And what we're going to do is have confessions from 1.30 until 5 p.m., so all afternoon. So uh, we, we're hoping that people will be spaced out and there'll be plenty of time to just stop by any time during that time. And you won't have to um, uh, get too close to people. We'll be able to have social distancing in there, okay? So if you want to um, have a chance to just get something off your chest, if you haven't been to confession in a while and you want to let God pick you up like that Lee Pickney, uh, and, and, and set you fresh again on the path um, of his light and love, then feel free to come, 1.30 to 5. We'll have several good priests available. No, no hard priests, only easy priests. No hard confessions. <laughs> Father Brian is, yes, he'll be there too. <laughs> um, all right, uh, I think that's everything. Um, but like I said, check Facebook um, for a complete listing of all that or, or WhatsApp. Uh, we do have a parish WhatsApp list, by the way. If you're not on it, uh, we do send out messages, reminders of things going on from time to time. So if you want to be on that list, just send us a message on Facebook or call the parish office and we'll put you on it. Um, have a great week, everybody, and happy Lent. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace.